Bienvenidas, eh, bienvenidos a esta vientiaba conferencia internacional de la Asociación Española de Estudios Irlandeses. Muchísimas gracias por estar aquí. En la mesa me acompañan la doctora María Mor Barros del Río, profesora de la Universidad de Burgos y organizadora de esta conferencia internacional, don Daniel de la Rosa Villaos, alcalde del excelentísimo Ayuntamiento de Burgos, Doña, la doctora Pilar Villar Argais, presidenta de la Asociación Española de Estudios Irlandeses, y el señor Frank Smith, embajador de Irlanda en España y Andorra. Muchísimas gracias a todos, sobre todo, embajador, alcalde, por estar aquí con nosotros. Eh, el rector de la Universidad de Burgos, don Manuel Pérez Mateos, no ha podido estar eh, presente porque ha surgido un compromiso que era ineludible, eh, así que yo presidiré esta mesa. Eh, tiene la palabra doña María Mor Barros del Río para comenzar los turnos de intervención. Señora vicerrectora, señor embajador, señor alcalde, señora presidenta, colegas, estudiantes, amigas y amigos, Bienvenidos y bienvenidas al Congreso Internacional número 20 de nuestra querida Asociación Española de Estudios Irlandeses, AIDEI. Dear authorities, colleagues, students and friends, welcome to the 20th International AIDEI Conference. <coughs> It is with joy that we meet again, face to face, in Burgos, after two years of distancing and too much screen watching. Also, the joy is double because this 20th anniversary is proof of the good health of the Irish studies in Spain. When the inaugural conference of our dear association, IDEI, was held here in Burgos in 2001 under the leadership of Professor Inés Praga, I was a PhD student, eager to please and very excited about the new adventure. Today, with my reading glasses on, I am equally eager to please, and I cannot express how happy and proud I am to see you all here, my dear friends and colleagues. All along these 20 conferences, we have built together an enthusiastic community of scholars whose love for Ireland has given birth to a first-rank journal, Estudios Irlandeses, many publications of reference and multiple dissertations, as well as international and valuable connections and close friendships. Today, we celebrate other anniversaries too. James Joyce's Ulysses was published in 1922. The proclamation of the Irish Free State in the same year, marked the beginning of a unique episode in Irish history and literature. The 20th century has witnessed relevant events, such as the partition of Ireland and the consolidation of the Republic, to eventually evolve into a modern and international country. Today, the island faces important challenges ahead in the post-Brexit European Union and in its political relations with the United Kingdom and its borders. These profound transformations have brought to light societal wounds and challenges that need to be revisited. And mothers and minorities, the debates about reproductive rights and the housing problem are just a few issues that social movements and activism are bringing to the fore. Inevitably, the field of Irish studies must incorporate new angles and perspectives too. It is in this challenging context that we celebrate IDA's 20th International Conference with an eye on what has been accomplished so far and another on what lies ahead of us. In these two days, we will enjoy critical and transdisciplinary lectures, enriching readings and challenging arguments. And at this point, I would like to say special thanks to Professor Limhart and Professor Jerry Smith for their willingness to participate in our conference. Also, writers Jan Carson and Mary O'Donnell, thank you so much for being here today and sharing with us your art. All in all, I'm sure new paths for research and collaboration will arise and keep us busy until our next conference in 2023. Before we go on with our busy schedule, let me conclude with a thank you note to the Universidad de Burgos for hosting this conference. Also, I would like to thank the Embassy of Ireland in Spain and Andorra, who is always supportive, kind and generous with us. The city of Burgos welcomed us yesterday with a lovely reception at the, and the Cabildo Catre de Alicio, the managing board of our lovely cathedral, will delight us with a special visit at night. 
Thank you very much to you all. Muchas gracias. Also, I would like to thank our sponsors, Ephesus and Culture Island, with whom part of this conference uh, could, not, could, not, could not have been possible. And also, Big Bang School and Education First for their support. And last, but not least, I want to say thank you in capital letters to the organizing committee for the support and hard work. And without any further ado, I invite you to continue with the program and listen attentively after this opening to Professor Liam Hart's plenary lecture. Thank you very much. Muchas gracias, María Amor. Eh, tiene ahora la palabra Doña Pilar Villar Argáis, Presidenta de la Asociación Española de Estudios Irlandeses. Muchísimas gracias. Um, dear Ambassador of Ireland in Spain, His Excellency Frank Smith, dear Mayor of Burgos, Don Daniel de la Rosa, dear Vice Rector of International Relations and Cooperation, Dr. Iliana Maria Greca, dear Head of the Organizing Committee, our dear friend, much admired colleague, Amor Barros, dear IDA friends, dear IDA members, dear participants, um, I'm afraid I'm going to repeat much of the same things that our dear Amor said in her presentation. Um, it's a great pleasure and honor for me to be standing here as chairperson of IDEI to welcome you all to the 20th IDEI conference at the University of Burgos. Today it's a very special day for me, for us, for the Spanish Association of Irish Studies. After two years of pandemic, we can finally gather up in physical form and celebrate our annual conference. It also coincides, as, as Amor said, with the 20th year anniversary of the association, 21 years ago, under the enthusiasm of our um, much dear colleague, Professor Ines Braga, something like 20, 25 scholars gathered here for the first time in order to share their passion on Irish studies. And we are going back to the same place uh, 21 years later, and we have achieved many things as an association in these last 21 years. Uh, to say the first, we are one, more than 110 members spread from all over universities in Spain. We have opened uh, new centers of research on Irish studies at various universities. We gather up every year for our annual conferences, which are very well attended by national and international colleagues. We have a prestigious journal that we are very much proud of, Estudios Irlandeses, um, which, is, which is in the best databases. Um, so we are very, very proud of everything that we have achieved mostly the consolidation of Irish studies as a field of study. Um, so I um, would like uh, well, to, to say that there is these two intense days ahead of us, I'm sure that we will all end up connecting in heart and spirit and celebrate together our deep love for Ireland, its history, its rich culture. As with all the IDEA conferences in the past, the idea behind, of course, is to learn from each other, to attend papers, to listen to our wonderful plenary speakers, to listen to interviews, to have conversations with our wonderful privileged, um, outstanding writers that we have invited, but of course, the philosophy behind is also that of sharing, facilitating, constructing, and establishing healthy networks, always with Ireland in the background. IDEA conferences have always revolved around timely topics, fostering academic debate and interaction, and this year's theme cannot be more timely, Ireland in transformation. Um, everything is changing constantly. We will be talking about that change, the change in Ireland 
at the social, cultural, political level, also the change of the field itself of Irish studies. Uh, the papers we will have these two days witness this change, and we are simply delighted with the response that we received when we first issued the first call for paper at the, at the end of um, last year in December. Um, there are more than 60 papers to be presented over the next two days, and just a look at the program already advances. Uh, the depth and scholarly approach to the conference theme, and we are all looking forward to engaging critically with our contributions. IDE is very pleased and very grateful that such an interdisciplinary group of speakers have agreed to participate in the plenary sessions, their interviews, the readings, and all the panels. <laughs> Liam Hart, Jerry Smith, Mary O'Donnell, Jan Carson, thanks so much for accepting the invitation and thanks so much for coming. I would also like to acknowledge members of other international associations with whom IDEI has a very close collaboration and contact and friendship. Thank you so much, Nacho Oliva, chairperson of the James Joyce uh, Society Association in Spain. Uh, we have to continue our close collaboration between the two associations. And thanks so much as well to our dear Mariana Bolfarine, chairperson of IBEI, our very dear Brazilian Association of Irish Studies. There are indeed many representatives from Brazil who have joined us for these two weeks. And we are so proud to have you here. And, and we want to continue with this network and this collaboration. We also count on papers by numerous colleagues and friends who are so loyal to IDEI. They come from France, they come from Portugal, they come from Ireland, they come from Germany. Um, of course, they come from Ireland and from all over Spain. And uh, we warm, wa warmly welcome you all and also the new scholars in the field. I'm so particularly proud to see so many young scholars who are so brilliant so um, in what they do, who are presenting brilliant papers, and this is indeed the future of IDEI. So, welcome you all. I would also like to thank all of, the, all of you who made this conference possible. Thanks so much to the University of Burgos for supporting and for hosting the event. Thank you very much, Vice Rector, for representing the university here. Thanks as well to Ephesus, to Culture Ireland, for their financial and structural support year after year. And thanks so much to the Irish Embassy in Spain, Your Excellency, Mr. Frank Smith. We are so proud to be counting on you here today. Thanks as well to the various institutions and entities behind the organization of this conference, El Ayuntamiento de Burgos, Cabildo Catedralicio Catedral de Burgos, and Big Ben School and Education First. Finally, and most importantly, thanks to the main organizers of the <coughs> conference. We, as an association, are extremely grateful to count on the best colleagues ever to organize the conference. Amor Barros del Rio was one of the founding members of IDEI here in Burgos and is one of the most committed specialists on Irish studies in Spain. Her generous dedication to the association is also highly inspiring and we are hugely grateful for that. Huge thanks to the people behind and in the forefront of IDEI 2022 the devoted conference organizing committee, all of them women, <laughs> Conceta Maria Sicona, Alba Fernandez Alonso, Rosa Maria Diez Cobo, Ana Maria García Arroyo, Lucía Muñoz Martín, Aranzazu Lucía Cosido García, Rosario Casas Coelho, and Maria Luisa Cerdán Bermejo. 
They have all been led by the expertise, dedication, warmth, professional work of our colleague, great scholar and close friend, Amor. Thank you so much for your effort, Amor. I day 2022 is already a great success. Thank you all. Ketmila Folcha Agus Coramila Magas. Muy bienvenidos y muchísimas gracias. Muchas gracias, Pilar. Tiene la palabra el excelentísimo señor don Daniel de la Rosa Villavoz, alcalde de la ciudad de Burgos. Uh, thank you, Ileana. First of all, I want to apologize because my English is not very good, so I want to speak Spanish, okay? Eh, buenos días a todas y a todos. Bienvenidos a la ciudad de Burgos una vez más. Lo digo porque ayer ya tuve ocasión de estar con algunos de vosotros en el Salón Rojo de nuestro teatro principal. Quiero agradecer la invitación expresa que ha hecho la Universidad de Burgos y su vicerrectora de Cooperación y Relaciones Institucionales e Internacionales para que pueda asistir a esta inauguración. Para mí es un verdadero placer siempre recibir a visitantes en nuestra ciudad. Y más si cabe cuando se trata de un grupo de personas comprometidas con la cultura y comprometidas con el, bueno, la, divulgación, la divulgación de dicha cultura y de los valores que implica a toda sociedad el tener la capacidad ¿no? de seguir avanzando y de seguir haciendo un mundo mejor. Y en este sentido, la educación en esa cultura y en esos valores que demostráis en torno a un país, a una nación como es Irlanda, pues eh, merece todos los respetos. No solo eso, sino que creo que dentro de la Unión Europea y lo decíamos ayer, ¿no? en tono un poquito más distendido, Irlanda eh, creo que se significa por una cercanía y una proximidad inusual respecto a lo que se puede entender como país anglosajón. Yo siempre, cuando he viajado a Irlanda, concretamente a Dublín, en dos ocasiones, he visto una ciudad acogedora, muy, muy diversa en, y multicultural, en la manera de interpretar ¿no? cuál debe ser el papel de la Unión Europea. Una ciudad y un país que enseña, que también da oportunidades y que es, en cierto modo, el, el carácter irlandés aquel que nos hace también identificarnos con él para todos aquellos que venimos del sur de Europa, ¿no? esa proximidad, esa cercanía y ese cariño que se demuestra en las distintas calles de, de vuestras ciudades. Mi única experiencia ha sido en, en Dublín. Yo sé que, el, que Irlanda, que Eire, que la isla es mucho más grande, ¿no? pero yo recuerdo eh, casi más, y perdonadme, esos ambientes juveniles que recorríamos en las proximidades de Trinity College o en el Temple Bar o en la fábrica Guinness o en la fábrica de Jameson, que también tuve ocasión de visitar, que otro tipo de, de, de monumentos. Por eso volví una segunda vez al año siguiente y ya pude ver el, el castillo, salí un poco de la ciudad, me enseñaron la gastronomía y, y bueno, yo creo que aparte del rugby, que por cierto, eh, aquí en Burgos tenemos un equipo de rugby en primera división, nos, nos está gustando mucho el deporte y nos estamos promocionando, la cultura en relación a las relaciones sociales, a la cerveza, al, a, la, a la gastronomía en general, pues es compartida. ¿no? Yo quiero animarles a, a todos, yo creo que ayer tuvisteis la ocasión, a que aparte de la jornada que se va a celebrar aquí, que por cierto es la vigésima, eh, el vigésimo encuentro y que por lo que me dijeron ayer es reproducir, ¿no? es renovar un poquito el compromiso inicial que hubo hace 20 años también en Burgos a la hora de sacar adelante la asociación. Bueno, pues os decía que compartiendo esa cultura en valores, compartiendo esa cultura por la vida, por las relaciones humanas, por la proximidad y la cercanía, Burgos también les va a ofrecer a todos ustedes la posibilidad de, de encontrarse en nuestras calles, en nuestras plazas, en nuestros locales eh, y también la universidad, por supuesto que sí. Así que aprovechen la jornada, contrasten experiencias, analicen la situación sociocultural de Irlanda, la situación en la Unión Europea, cómo podemos promocionar nuestra propia cultura de manera conjunta, pero también aprovechen para conocer Burgos, para conocer nuestra ciudad, para disfrutarla y para que a partir de ahora sean también ustedes embajadores de Burgos fuera de aquí. Así que nada más por mi parte y muchísimas gracias por su invitación.
Muchas gracias, alcalde. Tiene ahora la palabra el excelentísimo señor don Frank Smith, embajador de Irlanda en España y Andorra. Thank you. Um, thank you, everybody. Um, and I suppose the first thing I will say is I, I may have spoken for too long last night, so I, I promise uh, not to do so today. But um, so I, I won't um, dwell on my formal remarks here, except to say, firstly, um, to thank again the mayor for welcoming me last night, and to thank the the vice rectora for welcoming welcoming me here so warmly. Uh, this morning. I'm, I'm very pleased to be here. It's a real pleasure to be here for the 20th anniversary conference uh, of, of the association uh, and to be surrounded on my right and on my left by two of its, its, its stalwarts. Um, I suppose the, 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 the first thing I would say, and I, I said it last night, is that um, I'm very, I'm very aware that this conference in Burgos, you know, it, this isn't the first time Burgos has supported this conference um, and that the support goes back for many years and a long way. And in that sense, as I said last night, um, there is a sense of a, a sort of homecoming um, about, um, about the event taking place on this anniversary in, in Burgos. Um, and a, a sort of homecoming uh, for those of you familiar with U2, is one of their, uh, I think, you know, very, very uh, best best songs. And I know, I don't see it on the agenda here today, but I know U2's lyrics are something that have been studied and analysed by people like you uh, for many years. Um, just to say, coming to an event like this today and tomorrow, it's a real luxury. I have a very interesting job and a day-to-day, uh, scheme of things, but I, I have to say, uh, when you come and you see the agenda uh, for the for the next two days, you realise that this is uh, something a little bit apart from your from my everyday work. And I I think when I look at the agenda or the the panel discussions, it's a bit like going to a restaurant and seeing a menu where everything uh, on the on the menu is something that you would like to eat. It, it looks really very very interesting, um, and also. Just from an academic perspective, or from a from the discipline perspective, it's 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 always very interesting how the analysis of maybe one book or one set of poems can be extended very very broadly and applied to the way we live our lives in society, or the way we should live our lives, or the way we shouldn't live our lives. And it's it's always of great interest that that people like you um, dive in so deeply uh, um, and and pull out so much knowledge and wisdom um, and maybe guidance and advice. Um, I suppose one other thing I would say, I come from Ireland, it's a small country um, on the periphery of Europe, so I always find it humbling and even moving to attend events like this where one meets people who are not from my own country but who know uh, far more about it in many respects than I do and it's, it's, um, it's, it's truly impressive. I have to say, uh, to, to, to meet you in that respect. Um, I suppose just, just a couple of other points. Um, you, um, Pilar talked about um, Ireland changing, and, and that's very true. Um, it's constantly changing, and it's been changing very fast over, over the last two or three decades, and even over the last five, 10 years. Um, and many of, your, many of the topics on the agenda for the next two days uh, address those issues, whether it's divided society in Northern Ireland, uh, migration, um, women's issues, uh, there's so much of interest here and, and so much of relevance. And one of those changes, a very, a very small part, um, but an important part, uh, I, heard, um, I heard reference to, to a Brazilian uh, connection here. And um, if one was to look at Ireland 10 years ago and Ireland today, uh, in terms of its connections with Brazil, it is, it is almost 100% different in the sense that we now have probably 1% of the population of Ireland was born in Brazil. Um, you, so from that perspective, just that alone uh, shows you the sort of change that, that has happened and can happen. And maybe I, I, I imagine there might be plenty of scope for study uh, there in, in the years ahead. 
Um, so again, I'm, I'm not going to go on any further as, as I think I'm hoping I'm conveying to you that I'm genuinely interested in what's in front of us. Uh, I greatly admire those of you who have put in so much work um, you know, to, to be able to bring it uh, to a panel uh, in the level of detail and expertise that you will. Um, so what I will do just one more time is again just um, again express my great thanks and those of my colleagues in the embassy and my colleagues in our headquarters in Dublin uh, who genuinely are excited and moved by the fact that this sort of event is taking place, that this event is taking place. To those of you who have organized it, to those of you from Burgos who, from either the university or the city authorities, including El Alcalde, um, deep thanks and I look forward to spending the next 48 hours or so with you learning at least a little bit of what you know. Thank you very much. Muchas gracias, embajador, por tus palabras. Para la Universidad de Burgos es un honor recibiros y ser la sede de esta vigésima conferencia internacional de la Asociación Española de Estudios Irlandeses con un título tan eh, sugerente como Ireland in Transformation, que en realidad es también Europa en Transformación. Quiero en primer lugar agradecer a la profesora Moore, a su equipo y a la Asociación Española de Estudios Irlandeses por la preparación de esta conferencia, cuyo alto nivel se puede palpar en los fantásticos 70 trabajos, 60 trabajos que he podido leer que están en el programa, en sus dos conferenciantes plenarios, los doctores Liam Hart de la Universidad de Manchester y el doctor Sherry Smith de la Universidad John Moore de Liverpool, y a sus dos magníficas escritoras, Mary O'Donnell y Sean Carson. Eh, la relación de la UBU, de la Universidad de Burgos, con las universidades irlandesas es fluida, tanto en lo que se refiere a nuestros intercambios estudiantiles o de profesorado Erasmus, como en proyectos de investigación. Y en este momento, eh, esta relación se ve reforzada por nuestra participación en una alianza de universidades, EMERS, única de las alianzas lideradas justamente por una universidad irlandesa, la Universidad de Limerick. Eh, esta alianza pone en valor la pertenencia a la periferia, a las universidades de periferia, como decía el embajador. O sea, estamos alejados de los grandes centros y, sin embargo, eso tiene un valor para encontrar soluciones creativas soluciones transformadoras para los problemas, sobre todo para nuestros problemas europeos. Y para nosotros eh, ha sido realmente es un placer poder participar en esa alianza. Os deseo unos excelentes días de intensa actividad y de fructífero intercambio. Muchísimas gracias a todos y con esto doy por oficialmente inaugurada esta vigésima conferencia internacional de la Asociación Española de Estudios Irlandeses. Muchísimas gracias.